Here's an article that came out today. This is from Reuters. This is really crazy. So, well, not crazy. It's just, it's actually not surprising in the least bit. Uh, Netanyahu says, this is only the beginning. He has that voice like uh, Shigur from No Country for, for Old Men. Only the beginning, says Netanyahu, as Israel makes first raids into Gaza. Jerusalem, October 13th. Reuters, in parentheses. Israeli infantry made their first raids into the Gaza Strip on Friday since Hamas fighters rampaged through southern Israel. And Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu said a campaign of retaliation had only just begun. Israel has vowed to annihilate Hamas after its fighters burst out of Gaza a week ago and stormed through towns and villagers, killing 1,300 Israelis, mainly civilians, and making off with scores of hostages. Since then, Israel has placed the Hamas-run Gaza Strip, home to 2.3 million Palestinians, under a total siege and bombarded it with unprecedented airstrikes. Gaza authorities say 1,900 people people have died. On Friday, Israel gave more than a million residents of the northern half of Gaza 24 hours to flee to the south to avoid an onslaught. And guess what? A lot of people are not going to leave. You know why a lot of people aren't going to leave? You know why? Because they see themselves as shahids, as martyrs for Allah. So if the Israelis kill them, they're going to go to heaven. You're dealing with a massive suicide cult here. This is this is like a giant Waco. What do you think Waco was? So Waco was like a little microcosm of Gaza. That's what Waco, Texas, in Waco, Texas, back in the 90s when Bill Clinton was president, you had this cult that had this compound it wasn't really in Waco. It was more outside of Waco, just right, right outside of Waco. And they were planning on the end of the world and all this crazy shit. And the U.S. government was like, "Yeah, we're not gonna let this let these people just just have their cult." So, because the, the cult is dangerous and scary, so they sent the uh, ATF officers over there, and the cult just literally blew up the whole compound and killed almost everybody inside of it. It was a giant suicide bombing. Everybody, it was insane. But you're dealing with, when you're dealing with Hamas, you're dealing with a giant. Um, um, a giant uh, Waco, Texas, Branch Davidian style call. It's pr truly crazy. Um, so here we go. Uh, Israeli military spokesperson Rear Admiral Daniel Hajadi said troops backed by tanks had mounted raids to attack Palestinian rocket crews and seek information on the location of hostages, the first official account of ground troops in Gaza since the crisis began. We are striking our enemies with unprecedented might, Netanyahu said in a brief statement, which, unusually, was televised after the Jewish Sabbath had begun. I emphasize that this is only the beginning. So there you go. Several thousand Gaza residents took to roads heading out of the northern part of the Gaza Strip, but it was impossible to assess their numbers. Many others said they would not leave. There you go. Death is better than leaving, said Mohammed, 20 years old, standing on the street outside a building reduced to rubble in an earlier Israeli airstrike near the center of Gaza. You see, and this is the reason why they do these attacks in Israel, because they know they know Israel's going to retaliate. They know that Israel's going to bomb uh bomb Gaza. They know this, but they don't care because uh, they know that the people there see themselves as martyrs. They're completely indoctrinated into this weird suicide cult. It's like when Japan, you know, in Japan, it was like, I think it was in the Battle of Okinawa. Um, <clears throat> the Japanese were, they were arming everybody, civilians, everybody, and they told everybody just to attack the Americans. It was either the Battle of Okinawa or it was the Battle Ooh. of... Um, wasn't the Battle of Okinawa? It was the I think it was Battle of Okinawa or Battle in uh, it was like an island. I think it was the Battle of Saipan. So it was either Okinawa or Saipan. Okay, regardless, the Japanese were like everyone's gonna fight civilians. Everyone is a soldier. So the Americans had to deal with fighting a lot of people. So it was very difficult to fight the Japanese. It's gonna be very you now if Israel decides Okinawa. Okay, if Israel decides to go and just invade Gaza which looks like that this is it looks like this is highly likely to happen it's going to be brutal i mean this it's it, it, it's going to be brutal everybody uh and that really goes without saying it's going to be very very bloody because Gaza is extremely dense in the sense that you have millions of people who live very close with each other. It is one of the most dense places 
in the world, one of the most dense lands in the world. You have humans everywhere. They're crammed in all these buildings, lots of infrastructure, uh, narrow roads. That's the thing about the Middle East. You find a lot of narrow roads in the Middle East, and those narrow roads can be absolutely detrimental in a battle. Um, there was a, a battle during the Crusades. Oh, what was it called? Battle of Mansura, 1250 AD. Guys, look, the, look up this battle. Battle of Mansura, insane. 1250, St. Louis, King St. Louis, did an invasion of Egypt because he believed that because the Turks were highly concentrated in Egypt, that if he could defeat them there, then he could much easily take the Holy Land. So he went into Egypt. He took, he took the first city that he uh, entered without a fight because the Muslims had fled. So he thought, oh, this is going to be easy. This, this is a cakewalk. I'm going to defeat these Muslims so easily. He underestimated his enemy, and then he went into this town called Mansura. His troops were getting burned alive by blue fire. The Turks would, would arm their arrowheads with blue fire. And so you would get hit by one of these arrows. You could not extinguish the fire, even if you jumped into the Nile River. The Turks then cut off the French from their food. So there was a ship that came in through the Nile to deliver food to the French soldiers, the Crusaders. The Turks cut that off. They confiscated that ship. So no food was coming in. And they were forced to fight these Turks for about three months. So about three months of fighting, little to no food, getting hit by blue fire, fighting these ferocious Turkish warriors, thousands upon thousands, literally tens of thousands, I want to say about 30,000 crusaders were, were, uh, were slaughtered. And it was, it was horrendous. It was like the worst defeat, I think, in, in all, it was one of the worst, if not the worst defeat that the crusaders ever endured and do you know what happened in the Battle of Mansura? In the Battle of Mansura, and this is what led this is what led me to bring this up, there were there were a lot of these narrow streets. The Crusaders were not used to these narrow streets. So here they were in these narrow streets, crammed in in this in these narrow roads, and these Turks were coming in and attacking them and just trapping them in these in this in the in this narrow in these narrow routes. And it was just very difficult to fight in such a narrow in such a narrow road, in such a narrow alley. It was like when the Romans fought the Germans in the Battle of Teutonburg Forest, and the Romans weren't used to fighting in such a densely forested area, in, 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 such, a, in such an area that had so many trees everywhere. It was so densely populated with trees, uh, densely covered with trees that you had a tree here and a tree there, and you had a you know a seven foot tall German warrior in front of you with an axe. And, you know the Roman, the average Roman soldier was about you know a little bit less than six feet tall. So the, the, the it, it, fighting in densely populated areas. I mean, you're talking like Mogadishu type stuff. So it's very very difficult. And I'm not a military expert. You know, I'm not General uh, MacArthur over here, but I, I can just tell you with my limited knowledge on warfare that this is going to be if the Israelis do enter Gaza, it's not going to be easy for the Israelis. It's going to be very very difficult. The Israelis are going to need the help of, of, of the Air Force. That's going to be the biggest advantage that the Israelis have if they go into Gaza. If they have a war in Gaza, massive ground troops in the region, they're going to need air support, serious air support. If you cut them off from air support, they're, they're screwed because they're going to be surrounded by tens of thousands of people who want to kill them. Have you watched any videos off the Times of Gaza showing children being bombed and homes. They're saying over 300 children. Yeah, I've, I've seen all this stuff before. Brutality of war, everybody. It's very brutal. You know, don't, don't, listen. If you don't want your people... The, listen, the peop, the the organization that killed those kids ultimately was Hamas. Because you know how Israel operates. You know how Israel operates. If you... This is so stupid, guys. I don't know why. I, I think, I don't know. I'm not saying Gina. I'm not saying you're dumb. I'm not saying that. Not This is not addressed to you. I'm not addressed to you. But generally speaking, the people who are like, Israel is committing these terrible war crimes. Don't go invading another country and kill 1,200, 1,300 people. Uh, is, that, is, is it that simple for you or what? Is, is How difficult is that for you? Don't invade another country and kill... 
over a thousand of their citizens? Or are the Gazans so savage that they can't control themselves? The moment they get an opportunity to enter Israel to kill people, they can't help it. They have to go in there and kill people and rape and behead and do executions. So how about not going into your neighbor's country and then killing civilians and then acting like a victim when that country that you invaded attacks you? It's so freaking stupid. The Gazans are being bombed. White phosphor phosphorus. They're using white phosphorus, everybody. Do you know who used white phosphorus? God used white phosphorus when he destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. Fire and brimstone, that was white phosphorus right there. God is destroying Sodom with a white phosphorus. God's committing war crimes, everybody. God just used some white phosphorus. Do you know who killed those kids? Hamas did. Hamas killed those kids. Because if you know that Israel is going to bomb the shit out of you, if you go out and kill 1,300 Israelis, and you damn well knew that Israel was going to do that, and you did it anyway, knowing full well that you can't defeat Israel in a war, knowing full well that you're not going to get a victory over Jerusalem, knowing full well that Israel is going to pummel you with bombs, bombard you, seriously, then you're the fool. You're the suicidal fool. You know, American police officers, you know, America is the most armed population in the world. There's no populace that's more armed than the United States. If I take a BB gun that looks just like a pistol, looks just like a pistol, and I walk up to a police officer, and I point, this is a bottle opener here, okay, and I point that BB gun right at the officer, what do you think he's going to do to me? He's going to kill my ass. And you know what? Rightfully so. Because you were crazy enough and stupid enough to pull a stunt like that. Because police officers in America, they're not trigger... American cops are not trigger happy. Oh, they're just trigger... No, they're not. American cops live in the most armed population on the face of the earth. If you live in a... Pop if you live in a society where millions upon millions of people are armed with guns... You're going to always walk into a situation knowing that you're in an armed population, which means that you're going to be always prepared to use, your, to use your firearm. It's that simple. It's that simple. If I walk to a police officer, he don't give a shit if I'm white, black, Hispanic. He don't give a shit. I do this. He's going to kill me. It was a fake gun. Why did you do that? He wasn't going to find out. He was not going to find out until he's in a hospital or dead that this person's gun was fake. You can't lay that burden on somebody. They don't want to, oh, let me, let me see. Is that a real gun or a fake? They're not going to find out. They don't want to find out. They're going to kill you. That's it. If somebody has a knife, knife is a very dangerous weapon. I don't have to explain that one to you guys. And I walk to a police officer and I go, oh! He's going to shoot me. Why? Because all it takes is one plunge into the side of his neck with a knife for him to die. All I got to do is hit the jugular vein. All I have to do is hit a vital vein. And that cop is dead or either very close to death. So, oh, we're going to go into Israel and we're going to rape and kill and behead and... uh. <laughs> You can't do anything to us. You can't do anything to us because if you do something to us, then we're going to have all of our tools on Twitter, all of our all the cucks on Twitter put a put a you know a whole charade of comments about how evil Israel is and we're going to do a whole propaganda scheme against against Israel and uh, yeah, yeah, that's it. And Norman Finkelstein's going to come and 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 cry with his crocodile tears, all oh, the poor Gazans and blah blah blah. So you can just go into another country, behead, rape, kill, and, and nothing should happen to you. There should be no repercussions. The Israel shouldn't hitch nothing. No, everything's fine. Everything's fine. What kind of horseshit is that? That's horseshit, everybody. That's a bunch of horseshit. That's, that's stupidity. I am being consistent here. 
Now you have people who come along and they say, Ted, Jews worship a false god and they're not Christians and they're, and they're this and they're that. You're right. You're all, that is correct. Still doesn't justify what Hamas did. And let me tell you guys something. Because all of the people, almost all the people, I, I want to be careful with my words here, but almost all the people who revere Russia or they support Russia or they support Bashar al-Assad, they'll say, I support Bashar al-Assad because he fought terrorists. I support Russia because they're fighting the Ukrainian fascist. Okay, fine, fair enough, fair enough. Then you should support Israel in their war against Hamas. Why? Because Hamas is a terrorist organization, just like the FSA was a bunch of terrorists, just like al-Nusra was a bunch of terrorists, just like all these different gangs that the Assyrian government was fighting were a bunch of terrorists. And they are still a bunch of terrorists because they're still out there. Oh, no, 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 Hamas gets a pass. Why? Why does Hamas get a pass? Oh, it's because Hamas is a proxy for Iran, and Iran is against NATO. So basically, your philosophy is, your whole ideology is, if it's for NATO, it's bad. If it's against NATO, it's good. That's your philosophy. And what that does is it makes you morally inconsistent. Because if your morality is, I don't like terrorists, then you should be supporting any war on terrorists. Right? Simple. Oh, uh, no. Uh, uh, only if the terrorists are uh, armed by NATO, then, I, I, then uh, I'm against them. So, man, there's so much that I want to say about this. Um, so, they'll say, well, Israel shouldn't bomb citizen infrastructure. What the hell did Bashar al-Assad do for years? Did not Bashar al-Assad's regime bomb citizen infrastructure? Didn't he bomb buildings? Didn't civilians die under Bashar al-Assad's bombing campaign of terrorists? And what about Saudi Arabia? Saudi Arabia did this. Russia did this to Ukraine. Don't tell me citizen uh, civilians weren't killed by Russia. Oh, no civilians were killed by Russia. Then they'll say, well, that wasn't the intention of Russia. Russia did not intend to kill civilians. Ah, okay. So then Israel goes to the southern Gazans and they say, go up to northern Gaza because we're going to bomb the shit out of this place. Israel doesn't want to kill civilians either. They don't go there to kill civilians. 